the shock web pages uh, to that. And um, yeah, there were different ones. And I would also like to really thank all the, the mentors to put this together and to help uh, with this element. And I'm going to give uh, the floor back to, to Michele, which was our own um, good technical support in the back. And he will tell us something about the tool that was used for that and how everything went. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irena. So basically, yes, how, how the uh, shock intent challenge developed throughout these two days, but also before that. So basically, this is what happened. Uh, we have provided uh, the participants with uh, a couple of documents that Irena mentioned already before, which is the, the starter kit and the legacy book. The starter kit is a document that provided all the details about the challenges, so all the details about the, the topics that should be addressed uh, in this in this challenge, the agenda, how to correctly participate, how to submit the mice. So basically, how to leverage the platform to participate in this challenge. Uh, but also, we provided a fantastic legacy booklet, which is uh, a comprehensive list of resources and fact sheets on the shock tools to help the participants have all the uh, elements to correctly participate uh, and develop their user stories. Uh, before this event, uh, before this pitching event, we also organized an info session pre-challenge to give all this information and explain them uh, by voice to the participants. And also another um, meeting all together when, as, a, as a kickoff that we have uh, before the hackathon starts, so yesterday morning at 9 a.m. All of these videos are available on the platform on Event Tornado in case you missed them, so feel free to go there and watch it again. Then what we ask the uh, participants to develop, uh, basically the user story is composed by two milestones. Uh, the first one was a one page summary. Uh, it's a definition, uh, a description of the user story that summarized the, uh, the final goal of it. It should contain these following points, what, who, who, and, and when. And then we have the second uh, milestone, which is a, a comprehensive presentation of seven slides that will um, describe uh, the user. So who are yourself, your affiliation or research community, uh, what of, of the shock tools or services that you've used to develop your user story, what are the, the benefits that you identified uh, obtaining by using the shock tool, if you have some tips, tips and tricks for, do you have any tips and tricks for potential user of the shock tools that you can share with them? Also a picture of the, of the team or the individual that participated. Uh, the shock user experience, so how easy it was to familiarize yourself with the shock tools and resources, but also the recommendations. So anything that they, that they would like to recommend for future improvements. So this is also was the sense of this, uh, of this challenge. Uh, how we provided help uh, to the uh, to the participants. So basically, as I said before, with a legacy booklet, with a starter kit, but those are just documents because behind this event there are fantastic people which are our mentors. Our mentors are Stefan Lor, Cesare and Klaus. These people uh, stay there for a couple of days with the teams to support them in all of the uh, technical and, and let's say uh, content um, materials and support for, for the teams to have everything to participate correctly in this challenge. So thank you very much again, mentors, for being there. I saw the interaction during these uh, two days. You've been amazing, really, uh, in helping uh, everyone uh, in these two days. Uh, where the event happened? The event happened on our platform, which is called Event Tornado. As you can see here, we have set up several uh, channels uh, for the mentor support or maybe for technical support. And this is where all the teams and the people interacted all together. All the stakeholders were there to interact in this event, uh, to understand, to submit the milestones also. So this is the place um, which, is, um, which is an online tool, but I know that some people were there also physically, which is a good news. So I, I know that everyone would like to get back in touch with the uh, with reality after after Corona. So it's it's good that some people are there. Uh, but this is the the platform that we set up for you to overcome this uh, this problem. And also um, we had three amazing judges evaluating these ideas. The judges already evaluated the ideas, so we uh, already have these results and how they have been evaluating uh, the, the, the user stories or the ideas, as we call it. Uh, we had four criteria. 
how effectively was the challenge addressed with the use of shock tools, which is the first criteria, then how engaging is the user story told in the milestones, how inspiring and the tips and tricks for potential users. And the last one is how realistic are the recommendations for future improvements. Uh, each one of these criteria had 10 points available for a grand total of 40 points. Then, now it's time to um, let, give the floor to you guys, to the participants that, um, that competed in this fant fantastic challenge. So we have set up, uh, we have seven uh, teams participating. And um, basically what will happen now, I will give you the, the word to the team or to the individual that, that competed. And then at the end of your speech, you have three to five minutes to, ex to explain your user story, to talk about it. And then uh, at the end of your speech, if we have some comments or questions to the judges, judges, please come forward and ask uh, your question or comment. So I would like to start with the, with the first team in order of, of challenges. Uh, the first team um, is the, the team virtual teachers with the uh, user story, how to use DCR and switchboard in teaching and training. I don't know if Jan, Annette or, or Juliana can, can speak. I don't know if you're there. Yes, we're all here. Uh, all and right. I think somebody's going to start the PowerPoint for us as well now. Yes. So who should I make co-host to, to share the screen? Juliana? Michaela, so do you have the, the slides that were deposited as uh, the second milestone? No, no, no. I, I was, I mean, in this moment, I should give uh, the, uh, I should let the, uh, the team uh, share the screen from the computer if possible. Michelle and everyone, if it's okay, I can uh, take over the screen yes. sharing so, with the slides. Yeah. I Please haven't. do, because I think the teams here in the audience uh, does not right. have this ready. So thanks, Stefan. Then I just need the host rights. Uh, I so. think I think you have it now, Stefan. I guess. So yes, and here we go. Sorry for this little inconvenience. And here are the slides. Jana, you can start, please. All right. Thank you very much, Stefan, for uh, saving the day here. My name is uh, Jana Vesemeska, and I'm here uh, with my team of uh, Nanette uh, and Juliana. And we were also aided today and yesterday by our mentors Stefan, Emmanuel, and uh, Willem. Uh, and before we start, just to make sure everybody is awake, paying attention, I just want to ask you by a show of hand, who actually deals with students and junior researchers in their work? Who of you in this room? Almost everyone? Well. Three quarters, let's say. Uh, and those of you who are teachers, how often, who of you sometimes just wish that there was an easy resource that you could send your students to, to show them what the data we, is we work with, what the tools is that we use? Anybody misses that? Because we do, <laughs> yeah, we do. And so we are researchers as well, but also teachers and, and trainers. And what we're trying to do is to teach students and junior researchers to do research and interact with the data, the textual corpora, uh, and the survey infrastructures uh, in our fields. Uh, and that is social sciences and humanities. If I can have the next slide. And so what we really thought, wouldn't it be nice if we found a way for students to be able to encourage those students to interact uh, with research infrastructures to consult and create collections and to try out different tools to process and analyze data. And so that is what we looked at the switchboard and the virtual collections registry for. Uh, and so what we look at is for the switchboard, students could use that to process a language data sets directly from the VLO. Uh, the virtual uh, language observatory, the text grid repository, or a range of other sources. Uh, and the switchboard then automatically recognizes the data or the language and suggests which tools could be useful for those students to use. Uh, and the VCR is a place where we as teachers can provide collections 
that students can then use to refer to, but also where student teams themselves could make collections. And we've come up with a couple of examples, and for that I'm going to hand over to Nanette now. Yes, we thought about uh, two scenarios, uh, one from the linguistic um, point of view, which um, are now present for in, for in Juliana's name. Um, uh, if you have a group of students who are um, working on uh, 19th century English uh, literature and you want to do a linguistic uh, analysis, you could uh, combine several tools and we listed um, here the VLO, the switchboard, and in the end um, you come probably to an, a linguistic annotation tool like Weblicht. This next slide. Yeah, this is, um, I don't know if you can read it. We tried out the, uh, to find, um, in this case, the Bronte sisters um, in the VLO. You have several uh, hits here in your search. You can um, make a um, selection and you can directly go from each um, text to the switchboard, which will be in the next slide. <laughs> and in, if you open the switchboard in the, in the VLO, you um, and your students are able to um, choose the appropriate uh, tool. In this example, uh, we were looking for part of speech tagging tool. Um, which is on the next slide. <laughs> and um, yeah, and the actual analysis and work would be made um, here with um, Weblicht and all um, um, starting with the, with the search of the text and then coming to, to the um, use of the, the actual tool. Um, yes, that was the first quick scenario and then the next slide, please. Um, as we had also multilingualism <laughs> in our um, topic, we thought about non-English um, texts and also about uh, literary studies use case. Um, and uh, you can ex uh, exchange this question with any other um, um, subject, but here we looked into uh, Spanish literature from the 16th century and um, how to um, find these texts in, in different, on different ways, like, for example, going from the Daria repository, which is also connected to the switchboard, or from the text group repository, um, which is also connected to the switchboard, and both are um, uh, harvested by the VLO. Next slide, please. Yeah, and in this case, um, um, we found the, the, some Spanish texts in the VLO, but this text collection was actually published um, in the Daria repository. So it comes from the repository to the VLO, and there you can access um, the switchboard, as, a, as in the other scenario too. And the next slide. Yeah, or you find, you find probably not everything in the VLO, uh, or you, you don't know about the VLO, um, and uh, you're looking in, in another repository, in this case, um, it's the text group repository, in which um, you can also, um, y yeah, um, address or access the switchboard, but also on other tools, and there you find, because it's another language, you have, of course, other, um, another tool selection automatically um, selected. Yes, that's, that's it for the two scenarios. And in the end, um, if we want to um, make this teaching workflow um, 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 yeah, yeah, um, permanent and uh, documented, you can also use the um, VCR, and you can also encourage uh, the students themselves to use the uh, virtual collection registry, because as we um, know, the, the um, VLO is directly um, ac accessible or connected to the collection registry, and um, you can easily um, make a 
a workflow out of these teaching scenarios and which we ha don't have on the slides. You could also uh, post this workflow in the, in the shop marketplace <laughs> where it is also possible to um, showcase and to, um, yeah, to, to keep this um, knowledge and to share that um, with other scholars and other teachers and also other students. Okay, for the final words, it's Stefan's turn. Many thanks uh, to Jana, Juliana and Annette for the presentation. Allow me to conclude our talk with a few recommendations regarding interoperability, the topic of our challenge. So interoperability among resources and services is important because it has the potential to scale up the use of resources and to internalize standards among the community. Usually it leads to interaction among stakeholders resulting in relations, which could be described as social infrastructure, into learning, which may be called knowledge infrastructure. And of course, it leads to new resources and services. The latter aspect is the technical infrastructure and too often we only focus on this part. To achieve these goals, we need to take into heart at least the following points, which have also been mentioned by Dan in the session yesterday on interoperability. And they are use and advocate standards, promote common service development, like in shock, and evangelize our user communities to use the services and adhere to the standards and the fair principles. So that's it from our team. Many thanks for listening and the opportunity to present to, 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 here, uh, to you here today. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan, Jana, Annette, and Juliana. So, um, all right. Um, do we have any comment or uh, maybe a question from the judges here for this user story? Veronica, please. Um, I have a quick comment. So I really enjoyed seeing your presentation. It was a very nice walkthrough through the steps and how to use the VCR and the switchboard, how they are different, what they can do. And me as a social scientist, I also enjoyed seeing that as also maybe qualitative social scientists could very much uh, use the switchboard and the VCR. So it was very nice to see the input. If I may add to that. Yes, please, Carla. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I had more or less the same experience. I mean, we had little time to have a look at this presentation, but now the explanation of how to use the resources and data was very insightful to me. And it was really an extra to your presentation I only saw in the PowerPoint. So uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you. So thanks for, for the team and thanks uh, for everyone. Um, Michaela, perhaps we can move uh, to the second uh, team. Yes, also short right. on time, so thanks. Yes, so the second team is uh, Complutense Madrid team uh, with the user case Localizando Herramientas, Localizing Tools. So I'm going to give the word to uh, Adrian, just one second. And Thank here we go. All right, you should be co-host and you should be able to uh, share your screen if you want. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. I'm sharing the screen now. Sorry. Well, yeah. Here we are. Yes. yes. Thanks. We so, see everything. Okay. Thanks. This is us, uh, Adriane, Maria, and, and Amelia. We come from the uh, Complutense. And for some time, we've been uh, trying to introduce digital tools and digital humanities to undergrad students, to grad students, to PhD candidates and researchers, to citizen scientists who are elder seniors. So they're not um, really well skilled in, in digital humanities. And we're thinking about uh, the opportunity that uh, is the open marketplace and how it could be useful to, to these audiences. So we have two questions. How could we use the marketplace and the tools that are very included in these workshops and these projects with these audiences? And 
Second, how friendly is the current marketplace as it is designed right now for these people? Well, to start with, we depart from the perspective of uh, these audiences and we try to navigate to search the, the marketplace. So we were trying, for example, to, to look for annotation tools in the, in the marketplace. And we're finding a lot of output, a lot of uh, resources. Some of them are great, but uh, there was a lot of um, information that was not clear enough. That were uh, the keywords were not consistent one with each other. There were elements that were repeated, so it was a bit confusing. So we start. We entered one of the resources, Kadima, for example, and we had even more questions. For example, why is it only only in English? Uh, we're working with uh, with people who don't speak English or don't feel that comfortable working in English. Well, if I'm a senior citizen, is it really designed for me to use uh, this tool? Uh, is it really, is, is it going to be easy for me to, to learn it? I'm not sure about that. And, and there's not that much information about it. And even if there are really good training materials about it and related items in the marketplace, I cannot find it uh, uh, there, so it's a bit tricky. These are the takeaways from, from our, our analysis. First, the marketplace right now is monolingual, it's only in English, it shouldn't be. It's really, really important for low entry uh, users to understand how easy or how difficult a tool is and whether it's going to require that you know some code. Uh, second, that to actually understand what's going on there, what's available, you need taxonomies, you need to have a common shared understanding of what the tools are. But the taxonomies, even if they're key, uh, they need to be made understandable to, to everyone. So we need clear explanations of, of the taxonomy. And actually all of those uh, bullet points are filters that could be added to, to the marketplace. And last but not least, understanding is relational. It's key that we make links explicit uh, between all the different resources that are already out there in the, in the marketplace. We have plugins, we have uh, uh, training uh, materials, we have tools that serve a very similar purpose and it should be clear for, for the lay user. And with this in mind, we have uh, made some proposals. First, we've designed um, very simple icons for users to identify how easy or how difficult um, a tool is to, to learn and to use. And another icon to identify when you need to code. We need to understand some programming, have some programming skills. And that is how it would look like in the marketplace for an existing um, item such as Sotaro. Um, well, for example, uh, we've um, rewritten the, the description, which is in Spanish, because we think that it should be at least bilingual, ideally multilingual. We've added the difficulty level icon to say that, well, you shouldn't be afraid to use it. It's really simple. Uh, in the description, we've included specifications, limitations, really clear insights on how could, uh, can it be used and, and for what. We're adding here the training materials and the plugins that are already available in the marketplace. And we've already added here the intended audience. That, well, if you're a trainer, if you're a student, if you're a researcher, if you're a citizen, um, scientist citizen, you're gonna love it. The, the tool is going to be useful for you. So in all of this proposal, well, what's the point? The point is to align the marketplace design with all its intended audiences. Uh, the intended audiences for the marketplace included, um, for example, uh, science uh, citizens, uh, sorry, citizen scientists included uh, students, 
But as it is designed right now, it may be a bit challenging for them to, to browse the information that is already out there. Because the marketplace should not only be for those who are already uh, experts in digital sciences. The idea is to reach out for the whole community of uh, the social sciences in the humanities, which may not be that literate in digital tools. And actually, the better it is for them to browse information and to find what is useful for them, the better for everyone, even us. Second, uh, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of uh, sharing uh, knowledge in, in base of um, taxonomies, sharing taxonomies and using a terminology that's understandable and shared by everyone. We have already very good resources such as Tadira, which is already uh, multilingual, but we need to make these terminologies and these taxonomies accessible uh, for everyone. And last, um, our uh, third point was that, well, uh, we should embrace multilinguality. Uh, uh, our focus uh, in this project in particular is to reach out for the Spanish speaker community, which is really big in uh, there's a lot of uh, DH networks in, for example, in Latin America, and it would be really helpful for them to, to be able to access and leverage what is already there on the marketplace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adrian. All right. So uh, before giving the word uh, to the judges, Michele, just to remind everyone that we are short on time so exactly. for the next session. Okay, thanks. Exactly what I wanted to say. So please, guys, stick to the to the three minutes, uh, maximum three minutes, five minutes uh, presentation. Uh, I think that maybe Carla, you have some some question about um, about competency magic team. Yes, thank you. Um... But I will keep it short, uh, given the advice given before. Yeah, I want to make you a compliment for the very concise and um, clear way you uh, told us uh, from the start uh, the, the challenges to uh, the solutions you had. I wondered um, if you would gi give the most important trick for users. What would it be? I think uh, right now there are a lot of resources, but what we're missing is curation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. All right, time to switch uh, team. Also time uh, to meet uh, Paul Robert. Paul Robert participated with two uh, user, user uh, stories. The first one is on the team puppets, puppets and literature, enlarge the scope toward European puppet place next. So um, Paul, I'm gonna make you co-host in case you wanna share your screen. Give me yes. one second. Uh, there you go. You should be now joining as a co-host. Yes, everything is okay for everyone? Yes, we can see a screen. Yes. Yes, um, I made shorter than everyone, then it will be uh, very short for the two. And uh, I think it's okay. Firstly, uh, it's about puppets and literature. Uh, because uh, I, for myself, I work in, um, in a ERC research program uh, directed par by Didier Plassard, uh, and we are in uh, Montpellier in France. And uh, our research project is to uh, uh, gather, study, and make accessible to a wide audience uh, a large selection of plays for puppets and marionettes uh, for uh, regarding to all Western Europe. And uh, as I saw the marketplace uh, data set uh, available, uh, what kind of data set is available on the marketplace? Uh, I think that the puppet place deserves to be on this, uh, uh, deserves to be presented on the marketplace. Uh, in fact, there are Portuguese text, German text, English text, Spanish text, uh, a large data set of uh, all Western European text. Uh, modern text, but they are not, uh, in fact, French, French document, but uh, for minor language or minor represented language or old language, 
and uh, Puppet plays through here the anthology of uh, 300 texts uh, encoded in TEI, T -E yes, sorry, um, uh, can be useful. Uh, and uh, especially with uh, Western Europe uh, novel uh, 450 uh, dataset, uh, it will be a very good uh, complement. And uh, they will, uh, I intend by adding the uh, by the idea to uh, adding the public place data set to offer on the marketplace uh, a very comprehensive uh, look at the your brand literature one side. But uh, as I uh, crawl the marketplace, uh, I found some things that can be uh, be better uh, is as a way to uh, to present and to propose a public API uh, that exists other than the marketplace API. And for ourselves, uh, I didn't uh, propose, I didn't put the, um, the puppet place data set because uh, it is, it's still, uh, we, we are still working on it. We are still gathering text. It's only the beginning uh, and it will end in 2024 uh, in September, but, until the end of the project, we cannot depose the data set, but we have a uh, public API. And uh, as I dis discussed with my mentor, Laure Barbo, uh, I discovered that there, will, there are not uh, a, a, a very nice way to propose API. And uh, I think it's, it could be a great idea to add a way to reference API, to reference documentation uh, to API, because uh, for me, it's the next generation web and uh, it will encourage open science uh, very, very, uh, uh, in, in a better way to not only propose data set as a CSV file, JSON file, but to propose the API or uh, maybe an IDE to discover the API through the marketplace and then uh, People that discover the data set uh, can not only download the data set, but uh, reuse the data set on their own uh, website and so on. It's finished for me, for the first uh, project. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna maybe ask uh, quickly, judges, do you have uh, any, any comment on this one? If we don't have any more comment, we can um, go straight to the second idea that Paul had, which is um, the Marketplace Pelican. Um, and here, again, Paul, please, if you want to share your screen, we can take it from there. Yes, everything is good? Yes. OK. Uh, the second one is about uh, also API, but uh, not uh, the Puppet Place API or other program API, but the Marketplace API, because uh, they are a very nice API. <coughs> uh, uh, sorry, it's a wrong uh, presentation. No problem. Yes. Uh, I, I was inspired by um, uh, a Twitter bot, a very fun Twitter bot called the TEI Pelican that, uh, offer, that offers every day um, a data set of uh, about, uh, encoded in TEI uh, for people that want to work on it. And uh, it inspired me because I work on TEI, but I want uh, to create bot that crawls through uh, API of uh, Depo uh, op open deposit and so on uh, to get uh, to, to get updated on publications that I said uh, about my uh, my own topic of interest and I I did a little script on the API of the marketplace and I found that very there are very uh, 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 there are many very many uh, subjects. Uh, the different subjects on the on the, the marketplace, and I think it can be useful 
and especially if I use a different API, the Marketplace API, but uh, on Zenodo, for example, I connect them, I create a, noto, uh, a, a database full of uh, publications and data sets uh, automatically uh, drag into the database by a script and it sends uh, references or publications or data sets on Twitter or on the website. And, uh, it's, it can be very useful, I think, for uh, uh, monitoring uh, 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 a topic or uh, getting updated about the topic. Here my, uh, is my uh, model for uh, how I will build my API, uh, not my API, my, um, my script. I began to make it with a short marketplace. Uh, and uh, what I did, the, the visualization was uh, made with uh, a crawling on the label and description made on all the publications. Uh, one, one, one return that uh, I can, one, uh, one, one thing I can, uh, that, I, that I can say about uh, uh, the API is uh, an issue that I uh, met with um, a module uh, developed by the marketplace, uh, shock marketplace uh, team, uh, the SSH marketplace lib uh, that allows to crawl automatically through data of the marketplace. And uh, I cannot um, uh, like uh, uh, download it from the pipe uh, library, the Python uh, dedicated uh, module don uh, dedicated to download the module. And uh, the second issue that I uh, had is about um, the way the API is built on pages, but uh, after discussing with uh, the developers team, uh, there is another way to crawl through data uh, without uh, uh, using pages as system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. So, uh, do we have some some questions from the judges, from the jury? Yeah, just a quick comment. I mean, I feel Irena breathing down my neck all the way from Brussels, but uh, I wanted to cover both of your um, inputs. Um, and, you know, I just know that it had puppets, open science and APIs, what's to miss. But yeah, it was very nice um, to see everything and the improvements for the API can certainly also be used by other users. If you already have something, you also have a screenshot. So uh, very nice to see also the community behind the puppets. Thank you. Thank you. We gather a community about puppets, and, uh, very, and uh, now we, we are a very cool community. So. All right, thank you so much, guys. All right, time to skip to the next idea. The next idea is from uh, Julian Both. Uh, it's named "The University Library Helps You on Your Way to Openness," and the team is University Library Rye University Amsterdam. All right, so um, Anna, I give you the chance to share your screen yeah yes thank you um and if you could progress right to the slide where i introduce myself thank you um so uh my name is yuri bot i'm head of the research support at the university library at the Vrije universiteit in amsterdam not to compare with the one in brussels here um can i get the next slide please Anna? Uh, so my team consists of specialists on REM, uh, research intelligence and open science. Um, and for open science, we actually have somebody who started two months ago and who has the assignment to start up a training on open science for the different faculties that we have. Um, I used the, or I answered challenge 3A and B, and I used the training discovery toolkit. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so um, I, I got a real good sense of how the toolkit works and um, just by, by browsing I got a lot of good stuff and if you could click through the, the pictures, thank you. Um, there's a lot of information that just shows an introduction of open science and it was really easily findable, uh, but it also shows quite fast what kind of things I was missing. Um, so that is also a way of to, to know what, what I have to do for myself to, to make the presentation or the training complete. Uh, one extra thing that I really liked was um, the, the picture on the bottom right, uh, that there is free access to certain items in the toolkit, but they're not always available because it's a physical training, for instance, that you have to enroll in. 
and that's something that you can easily spot and so so you don't really have to click through the entire thing to get to know that but it's easily available um, one of the th tips that i had is that some material is a bit older um, and for the, the netherlands for instance at our university 80 percent of our publications are already open access so it's really ingrained within our university and these are basic steps on how to get to open access um, that's not that for other people that information is not uh, useful, but for me, I was thinking that maybe if you know the date and uh, the updateness of, of things, that would be helpful. Um, and another tip that I had is I really hope that we can feed back our own material back into the toolkit uh, and keep progressing as open science will progress as well. Uh, next slide, please. So a bit of a sidestep for me, but I had a childhood trauma. I asked my parents for this particular Lego set. It's a monorail. It was very, very cool. I never got to have it as a kid. Um, but I'm a bit of a Lego aficionado. Uh, next slide, please. And I was looking for interactiveness uh, in the toolkit on how to make your trainings more interactive. And I saw this Lego reference. And of course, I had to include it into my presentation. Uh, another thing that I found which was really fun too uh, was the, the card game for open science training that really got an idea for me to, yeah, to more interact with the people that you are training. Uh, so that was really helpful as well. Next slide, please. Um, so what will I take home to uh, the person that will have to make this uh, uh, training? Don't start from scratch. Uh, use it to do the, the toolkit to see what we will, what's already out there. Also find out what's not out there. That's really useful. Um, and I hope that the content will keep progressing. And for those of you wondering, I did solve my childhood trauma by buying it as an adult. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ray. All right. So, judges, comments, questions, do you have any? It was nice uh, that the features were highlighted and the funny story with the Legos and yeah, the screenshots from the tool. So it was very nice to have a look at the um, challenge output. All right. Thanks so much. All right. It's time to skip to the, to the last but not least idea. This idea is called uh, League of Data as a teaser for a data management training. The team name is played out. And Ellen, are you there in Brussels? Ellen is here, and I would also like to mention that she was also a mentor. So the things that were presented just before she had a hands-on, and she'll now present also some other things. <laughs> okay, hi. Um, yeah, so I, because I was in, uh, asked to mentor um, um, the other challenge, um, 3A and 3B, um, I also looked into 3C and I got really um, off track. How do you say that? It, it is a game and a data management game. And, you know, I'm always looking for engaging something fun when you start a training or when you have a break in training and people are don't know each other that well, then maybe they can sit together and, 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 and do a game. So that's... Um, should I move the slide? Yeah, can you move the slide? Yeah, okay, so that's me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, just uh, thinking about uh, where to get all these uh, engaging uh, elements into the training. So that's why also, by the way, in the training discovery toolkit, we have put some special emphasis on, on engaging activities. Um, the League of Data game is, uh, so, the, the, re, the League of Data, yeah, the League of Data game I did was mainly, uh, uh, I was mainly doing it to see if I could use it in training as a trainer. And um, just, it, would it be fun? Well, I already knew that because I was already hooked. And um, uh, how I could... Uh, um, you know, how I could use it in training. I have to say it's based on the data management expert guide, uh, which I was also involved in, but I didn't know about the game until recently. So I was really, it was a really good surprise. Let's, what I, yeah, can you, can you show next slide? So what I missed actually, 
And I sort of, when I looked at all the other presentations, I thought, why didn't I do it? And I thought about it this morning. I should have added all these screen dumps of the game itself instead of my evaluation of level one, what did I miss, how, did I, how could it be improved? And, um, um, but the game is, you know, please go ahead and do the game yourself. It's like the, a game in the 80s, like, dee, 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 you know, these childish bleeps, you know, this, this really, like Pac-Man, you feel like, oh no, I have to do it again, you know, push. <laughs> um, so do it. I thought it had a really nice vibe. It is really short, every level is really short. You can see, uh, um, I put a, an about, well, you can't read probably, but every level has a sort of learning goals. So what is the difference between storing and archiving? Um, 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 you know, the fears of researchers are big monsters moving around. So you have to tackle the fears and then it says what the fear actually is. So do you think, oh yes, I have that fear. Um, and how you can promote your um, uh, your published data. So I think that is really a good one also to, to bring up front in your game. So I really liked it. And um, I think uh, I, will, I will try it out if others like it too, because if I like it, it doesn't mean that others like it, I know. And it doesn't mean that it's useful. So I will try it out with other real people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ellen. All right. No, okay. Irena, yes. we're running very short of time, yes, right? So we All would right. like to wrap this up in <clears throat> three minutes, if possible. <laughs> in three minutes. All right. So you, you all already know the prizes. So let's keep to the part in which we announced the winner. Um, yeah. So uh, the third, the third prize goes to the virtual teachers. So, Jana, Juliana, Mimet, congratulations. I give the floor to you. Um, if you want to provide some comments. Thank you very much. We're ha very happy with the prize, and I had really a lot of fun working on this with uh, Jana and Mimet. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, the thing is that there is a tie in the third place. So, now there is not the second place, but there's another third place. Which is play lot from from Ellen that already presented right now. Ellen, please, if you want, go back to on the stage or maybe say thanks for three, as you wish. All right. And then it, now it's time to announce the second the second uh, position. The second position is uh, from Jerry Both University Library Bright University at Amsterdam. So congratulations, uh, Jerry, for this uh, second second place. Thank you so much. Um, and then now it's time to announce the first position, guys. The first position, the winner, is the Competencia Madrid team with Adrian, Maria, and Amelia. Congratulations, guys. So we have a couple of minutes for them to, to say something, Irena, I guess. So, um... I don't know if, if the winners want to add something, but I would really like to, to thank everyone for, for joining. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much from Madrid, from Complutense University. But I would like uh, to, um, my, my, uh, uh, my PhD candidates uh, take uh, the floor. Please, Adriana and Maria, something to say? <laughs> Um, I think that uh, we'll have to say thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for the supportive, um, for the supportive attitude <laughs> about uh, our project. Uh, we were working uh, a lot to to bring our our students and our elders a, a better education the, on digital and the digitalization. Uh, um, abilities. So yeah, <laughs> I think this is the most uh, important thing. I don't know what you think, uh, Adrian. <laughs> no, thank you very much. And actually, the real prizes, uh, all the we've learned along the way, and mm. that we're trying to pass on to to the next ones. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, I think uh, Michaela this uh, wrapped up this session. Again, thanks everyone for joining. We'll be in touch with winners about our pricing. Uh, if they need to know more, we are somewhere around. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch. And I would like to give the floor for the final uh, session. And I would like to invite uh, Ivana um, to the floor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for the great work. Bye. 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 <laughs>